guys, uh, come on in. Come on into my art den. What's happening, man? This is Trent. I've been a concept artist in video games for almost 20 years now. Before that, I did comic books. Uh, but now I'm a YouTuber. That's what I do. <laughs> and here on YouTube, I like to I like to pass down what I've learned. I like to pass down a little bit of the experiences that I've had that could help you in your career. And one of the questions that I get a lot of people asking me a lot about is, uh, you know, style. One, you know, like, uh, how do I find my style? And and what's the best style to have in my portfolio? And and which job should I be chasing after? And and there's just a general sense of directionless. It's like directionlessness. <laughs> like, where do I where where do I really pursue and put my energy if I want to be a successful artist? And that's a complex question because it's different for every individual, but I want to talk about my experience with it and things I wish I had known when I was starting out with my career. Specifically, I want to tell you about how to find your own lighthouse, your own direction, your own compass, so that you know where you're going. Because once you know where you're, you're headed, once you know what it is that is going to bring you satisfaction in your life, a sense of accomplishment, a sense of overcoming, a sense of value in yourself and in what it is that you make, once you find that lighthouse, you're going to find some opportunities are not going to come along. And other opportunities with like-minded people are going to seek you out. And I'll tell you what, when I was younger, I would just chase whatever it was that my managers told me that I should value, or I would chase whatever the company values were. I was always looking to somebody else for what my value should be and what kind of an art style I should be pursuing. I mean, ever since I started working at Marvel, I was on Ghost Rider and one of my art heroes, Joe Quesada is like, I think he was under editorial pressure to tell me, Hey, Trent, you should be trying to draw more realistic on Ghost Rider. And it was like, yeah, but that's not what I do, you know, I, but I really had to challenge myself to try to draw in the art style that they were asking me to draw in rather than trust in my own intuition. But I had to do it because I wanted to keep my job, you know, I had to try. And that was fine for some time because I was able to pay my bills and establish myself. And, and it wasn't a bad thing to learn and challenge myself to do all of these new art styles and to perform at such a high level on big AAA games and on, you know, popular Marvel comic books. It wasn't a bad thing, but I wasn't entirely happy for me. You know, that might have been fine for somebody else, but for me, I wasn't entirely happy. For my part, I found that I didn't need somebody else to tell me what I should want. And so after I paid my dues, doing all of the, the time in the trenches and doing things the way that I was sort of told by art directors to do it, which I would recommend to you, you absolutely should. If you're employed, you should do it the way the art director tells you to do it and strive for that goal. But if it's not something you enjoy, don't, don't get trapped by it. You know, I had to make a difficult decision to go my own direction at some point and life has gotten so much better for me. I feel like my work has gotten better too because I'm embracing it. I feel really good about what I'm doing. I don't feel like I'm chasing after somebody else's goal all the time. So it's important to know what your strengths and what your personal goals are. When, I, when I'm talking about this, I'm talking about you finding your own compass. I'm talking about you finding your own lighthouse. I'm talking about you really stepping back from chasing what maybe your friends might be trying to paint like or what your uh, teachers or instructors might be saying, hey, there's more jobs in pursuing this other art style. You know, those trends tend to come and go. And if it's not something that you feel that you're good at or even enjoy pursuing, then I don't recommend pursuing those things because if you're always chasing after somebody else's goals, you're gonna get sidetracked so many times you'll never get to where you wanted to go. It's kind of like driving a car and the passenger's constantly telling you to make turns and then you're constantly switching lanes and then you look over at the lane you were just in and you're like, well, somebody else just passed me by and if I would have stayed in that lane, I would have been fine. But now somebody's saying, oh yeah, you should have stayed in that lane, but by the way, switch lanes again. And before you know it, you're running around like a chicken with its head cut off. You got no compass, you got no direction, but if you knew what you wanted all along, then anytime somebody said, hey, turn left here or change lanes or, hey, you should be doing this other art style. Or, you should be doing that other thing or, hey, you should be applying at this other job or chasing what I want. Then you can just block them out and go, mm -mm, buddy, you don't know where I'm going. I can just drop you off at the next turn. All of those years that I was letting all these other people tell me how to draw and what art style to pursue and, oh, stylized work is, is dead and everything's all photorealistic GTA art now. All those years that I was following that stuff to keep myself employed or thinking that I was keeping myself employed, I was watching stylized artists like Cheeks Galloway blow up and Scotty Young. I was watching all these artists do really stylized artwork and it was doing really well for them. And the whole time, if I would have just trusted in myself, I might have, I might not have Diablo three under my belt. I might not have some of the games that I've worked on under my belt, but I would have built my own brand. I would have built a more independent brand. 
I guess what I'm saying is like, I always knew I was independent and I wish that all those years ago, somebody would have told me, yo, you know, just put a little bit more faith in yourself and your own intuition and your own taste, invest in your own art style. Cause when you have a unique brand, it's irreplaceable. Nobody can replace you. You're the only guy who can do that. It's a longer, harder road, but there's job security there. If you have an audience, even if it's a small one, these pieces that I do for the galaxy's edge novel covers are a direct result of exactly this philosophy that I'm talking about in this video. So let me tell you a little bit more about what this piece is about. Basically a few years back, I had decided I just want to do a lot more of my own art style uh, kind of work in the pieces that I'm painting for my channel and for, uh, for YouTube here and for the clients that I work with. And I thought, well, you know, if somebody doesn't like it the way that, you know, I do it or that my studio does it, well, we're just going to pass on those jobs. And I was approached by uh, Nick Cole and Jason Onsbach. Nick Cole, I had worked with on a contract gig a few years ago uh, where we were both working on some video game. And uh, he really liked my work a lot. So when they had this really successful series of books called Galaxy's Edge, when they had that just blow up, they were looking for artists to do some covers for them. So they reached out to me, you know, and uh, I told him straight up, man, mm -hmm, you know, I don't know if I'm the right guy for this job because I don't do that kind of like halo box art kind of like realistic military sci-fi kind of painting that's just not what i do baby i do this more line art kind of a stylized thing and they said well you know what we just we like you <laughs> you know thank god they they were just like we, we really like what you do and why not give it a shot we'll just give it a shot we'll try it and so uh i kicked out a couple of uh drawings uh, over the course of a weekend and they loved them and more than that, they showed them to their audience and their audience loved them because it, it was a little bit different. Now, I have a lot of respect for the artists that they work with that do the more photorealistic, Halo style, military shooter type of covers. I think those are beautiful paintings. That's not something that I can do. I probably could have really struggled and tried and, and maybe come up, you know, something close to what they do, but that wouldn't have really been true to myself. And I wouldn't have been as unique as what I had brought to the table. And I found that that uniqueness was actually valued by them. Now, not everybody's going to value your uniqueness. And if you try to do that kind of a thing, you're going to have clients who are going to say, well, then, you know, we're going to choose to go a different direction. And that's happened to me many times as well. I've had some clients who just decide, well, we're, we're going to go a different direction because this isn't what we had imagined it would be. And that's perfectly okay. You have to be okay with that, especially if you're going to be bold and say, I'm not going to do an existing style. And if you can't do the style that they want, be straightforward with them right up front and just say, I don't think I'm the right person for you. Yeah. And I'm not going to take your money. And if you're wondering, you know, how do I, how do I find what my art style is? Well, I would recommend that you look through your portfolio. This is gonna be a difficult thing, by the way, but look through your own portfolio, start where there and uh, try to pinpoint which pieces really stand out to you that you like, that you liked doing and that you feel the most confident about that. You feel like that's a trajectory. That's a good direction for you. It's different. It's unique. It's expressive of your true personal voice. Everybody has their own unique individual voice. So find that in your own work and amplify those elements that are standing out to you that you do like, and still challenge yourself with new techniques and new skills. Every now and then I'll find a new artist and I'm like, ah, oh, I want to see if I can add that little brushstroke thing that Ashley Wood does, for instance, you know, and I'll try to add that into something that I'm doing just to see how it fits, you know? but start with the elements of your own work that you do really like and really like try to pinpoint what those elements are and amplify them, develop them, build the rest of your style and your artwork around those elements and those features of the things that you really love to do the most and that accomplish what it is that you, uh, suits your tastes, not the tastes of a popular portfolio, but your tastes. And then really assess, is this style appropriate for any employers that I would want to work for? You know, if you're drawing in an Invader Zim kind of an art animated art style, you're probably not going to be, you know, applying at game studios like Blizzard, but you'll find great opportunities in animation houses. You might find great opportunities in creating your own comic. That's going to come with a lot of other challenges. But don't work in reverse. Don't uh, don't try to fit into the glove of whatever uh, that studio wants if you really don't like that art style. Developing your own art style is a great thing for building your own brand, but it does usually mean that you're going to go independent, which means you're going to have to take on a lot more of the business stuff. And you're going to have to learn how to market. And you're going to have to have a lot of presence on social media. You're building your own fan base and they will take care of you if you build that. 
Uh, but if you choose to not develop your own art style and you choose to emulate other existing art styles, you're going to be a lot more employable as a corpo. You're going to be a corpo kid uh, working for big uh, game studios or working for mobile game studios. You're going to be employable, very employable. But you can't really build a name for yourself as an employee and oftentimes you're just told to paint like somebody else. You're just a cheaper version of another person's art. But there does seem to be more of an illusion of security in that and a lot of people choose that because of that. It's also easier to learn how to dissect somebody else's existing art style than it is to really refine your own. Now other people may have a different philosophy about this. And that's okay, man. I don't want to tell you that they're wrong or anything. But this is my channel. You tuned in to hear my perspective. <laughs> So that's what I'm going to give it to. I'm going to give it to you. Uh, I want to encourage you to go and check out Galaxy's Edge if you like military sci-fi and if you like uh, bounty hunting uh, sci-fi action. Uh, this particular one is uh, for uh, Banshee's Last Scream, which is a Tyrus Rex book from Nick Cole and Jason Ansbach. Great writers. I love those guys. They're such an inspiration to me. I want to thank you all so much for stopping by, and I hope that you'll come back next Wednesday. Until then, I'll catch you all in mañana. That is next Wednesday. And until then, <laughs> ciao, baby. Oh, yeah.